Hey guys, welcome back to my channel today. In today's video, I am going to be doing my high-end and luxury perfume collection. A lot of you guys have been asking me lately to do collection videos and perfumes was actually the very first request ever in this kind of category for collection videos. So I am so excited for this. I have quite a few sitting right to my left here. So this is probably going to be a bit of a longer video. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I try to be very succinct and like to the point in a lot of my videos videos, but I think this is kind of an opportunity to be a little bit of a longer one, grab a snack or a favorite drink or something and get comfortable because we're going to get through so many beautiful perfumes. I am so excited. Really quick, if you guys are new, hello, my name is Jenna Fraze. It is so nice to meet you. My channel is all about high-end and luxury makeup and perfume. So if you love high-end and luxury beauty products just as much as I do, then I would love for you to consider subscribing so you never miss a new video. And without further ado, let's get on to my perfume collection. So let's start with the first brand. The first one is from the Replica collection. This is, I believe Replica is the collection. Replica is not the brand. And the brand is called, okay, let me read it off here. It's in French, so <laughs> I'm sorry, this is going to be bad. Maison Martin Margiela, I think. I hope that's not completely awful, but that's what the brand name is. It is a French brand from Paris, and then their collection is called Replica. So the first one here is Replica. This is Beach Walk. This one is super popular at Sephora. It has been a bestseller for some time as well. And this one is really nice. It says that the description is sun-kissed salty skin, which I do think that is actually pretty bang on. The notes in here are bergamot, heliotrope, <laughs> gosh, this is bad, and coconut milk. So this one is so, so nice. It is really, really beautifully done. I like how it's balanced. It's not overpowering. I do like the scent of this is pretty long lasting. I would call this medium. It's not like the longest lasting fragrance ever, but I do think, you know, putting it on the pressure points, especially in the back of the neck with the hair, for some reason, right at the back of the neck and kind of at the nape of your hairline there is actually the best for me because then it just really extends the length of the perfume. I also like to put it over top of lotion that has not quite dried. And that is kind of like my little hint that if you put some lotion on your arm and you spray it, and then it'll dry a little bit as the lotion dries and it kind of extends the life of your perfume as well. But anyways, this one is definitely my first fave. All of these are favorites, so <laughs> let's be real. But this is the first one that I have in my collection. So beautiful. The next one is also from the Replica collection. This is newer to me, and this is Sailing Day. So this one I hauled within the last year for sure. I believe it was from the spring VIB sale or a haul right around that time. This one is incredibly fresh smelling. The fragrance description of this one is aquatic deep sea. And this one totally makes sense with that. Like it's exactly where I picture myself. I picture myself wearing this like while on the beach or on a dock, summer day for sure. Like just enjoying the fresh ocean air. Like I know that sounds cheesy, but it's totally true. This is exactly what that smells like. The notes in this one are aquatic accord, coriander, red seaweed essence. So again, really, really unique. Loving both of them. Super beautiful fragrances. The next two fragrances are from Chloe. And the first one is just their original Chloe Eau de Toilette. This is what this one looks like. It is in the smaller size. As you guys can see, my lid or the portion right here is completely tarnished. I don't know if that is supposed to happen. I don't know if it was accidentally, you know, sprayed down with a cleaning product and maybe it tarnished that way, but it does give it kind of an old school vibe. <laughs> this one is a fresh floral as well. And I have had this one for years. It is so beautiful. So the notes of this one are mandarin, melon, rose, and violet. So it has a nice fruit floral balance. This to me 
is classic elegance, like the packaging is beautiful, and this one has been in my collection for some time. It is really beautiful. The next perfume is also from Chloe, and this one is the C by Chloe perfume. This one, again, very simplistic packaging, but kind of like that classic old-timey kind of look. It's really beautiful. It reminds me of a birdcage, like it's so pretty. And then this one is... Again, floral with a hint of freshness. So kind of along the same lines of the Chloe Eau de Toilette. If you like the self-titled perfume that I already showed, you'll probably enjoy this one as well. The notes are bergamot, apple blossom, jasmine, liang liang, and then it has a base of soft vanilla and sandalwood. So this one, really complex. These are not like old lady perfumes, if you know what I mean. They're very fresh, like modern, and I just really love that. The next perfume is from Louis Vuitton, and this is the Mille Feu perfume. I believe that's how you pronounce it. <laughs> this is French, so I'm sorry if that's incorrect. Anyways, this is a perfume that I received as a gift from my husband in Mexico. I believe this was last year, and this one is so unique. This is probably my warmest, slightly spiciest perfume ever. Like this is kind of like a date night perfume. This isn't like a everyday work perfume unless that's your style and you want to rock it. Cool. <laughs> the key notes in this one is actually leather. So there is like a leather kind of undertone to this fragrance. It kind of reminds me of when you're going shopping in a luxury store and you smell that beautiful like leather handbag that you've always wanted. <laughs> that's what this one smells like. And it also has hints of raspberry in it. So Again, kind of in that fruit parallel that I really, really like and enjoy, but the leather made this one really unique. It's very rich as well. So this is not one that you're gonna wanna go to town with. Some perfumes, you can absolutely do that, but this one is really, really like concentrated. So the amount of perfume you get in here is going to last you a long time. But when I smell this guy, first of all, it brings me back to Mexico and spending that time with my husband. But it also reminds me of going to like the luxury stores and buying my Prada bag and like just being so excited like smelling it and being like yep this is like amazing quality so excited so that's what this one is very special to me <laughs> the next perfume I want to talk about is actually from Tori Birch and this is her self-titled perfume I think this is just called Tori Birch this is the original this one again I've had for some time it has been used up quite a bit it's about halfway and this one I really do love the top like I love the lid of this one very Tory Burch. It has that classy elegance to it. This is a fresh fragrance for sure. Very easy to wear. You can wear it for some time as well. I actually find this one to be pretty long wearing. And this one is, okay, the keynotes in here are grapefruit, jasmine, neroli, and peony. I actually think that the citrus, like the grapefruit, does pull the highest in here, but ever so slightly and it just balances really well with the floral essence of it. So I really love this one as well. The next one is actually a brand that I picked up from Sephora. This is by Atelier Cologne, and this is Pomelo Paradise, I think. Pomelo Paradise. Anyways, this one is very heavily fruity. I do love how concentrated this one is. It is one that the whole branding of this whole company is that they're trying to make very fragrant, very concentrated perfumes that you don't need a lot to get your desired smell or your desired effect. Very citrusy, very fruity. It has a touch of a spice to it. The notes in this one are pink pomelo, Calabrian mandarin, black currant bud, Moroccan orange blossom, and Bulgarian rose essence. And this one, the only complaint I have, if I'm being very picky, is that these, to me, don't last as long as some of the other ones I have on my skin. So what I do with this one is I do my lotion trick. I try to get it at the back of my, you know, neck, kind of by my hairline, just so that everything is really well saturated and it keeps the scent going longer. I think it reminds me of summer. Summer being my favorite season of the year, this is just like all up in it. This is amazing. <laughs> The next one is also from a Sephora brand, and this is from Clean. This is Warm Cotton. This one smells like fresh laundry. This is 100% what this one is. It just smells clean. It does say it is inspired by a fresh, comforting, just laundered scent that gives you a deep, relaxing breath, which is... Yes, a very fancy way of saying that 100% that's what this embodies. This one is definitely one I grab if I'm not into anything super like 
fruity or floral that day. I just want something really simple and, you know, fresh and clean smelling. I just grabbed this one and this one's also cruelty free. So I do really like this brand and yeah, been very much enjoying the warm cotton. Next, let's go into Mr. Tom Ford. I do have two fragrances from him. The first one is the Eau de Soleil Blanc. This is my latest one from Tom Ford. This one smells like a summer day. Oh my goodness. It smells like you're laying on a beach. Again, like the Soleil Blanc is just like the perfect name for this. Tom Ford though, as you know, very expensive. So this is the smaller one. I do have a bigger version of the next fragrance. The notes in this one are again, bergamot. I feel like I love bergamot. Like everything has bergamot in it. Bergamot, cardamom. This is pistachio, liang liang and coco de mer accord. So this one as well, it says inspired by remote private islands where summer lasts all year and one day seamlessly blends into the next. This one was actually released not that long ago, I think. So one of the newer ones to my collection, but really enjoying this one. The next one that I own from Tom Ford is actually the Mandarino de Amalfi Cologne. This one is really popular as well, and it's known for being fresh. This one says it's inspired by the calm whitewashed villas of the cliff sides of Amalfi, which is in Italy. The notes of this one are jasmine, orange blossom, mint, thyme, and then grapefruit. So this one, again, balanced really well between the mintiness and the thyme. I think that's definitely in the lower end of that fragrance. I definitely smell grapefruit for sure and jasmine, I think are the top two that I smell. But this one is really fresh and definitely well balanced appeals to me for sure. And the next one that I want on my list is actually Sandal Blush. I haven't smelt it yet, but I did hear that Taylor Swift loves that one and Taylor Swift is like my hero. So that might be the next one I try to pick up. <laughs> we will see. The next perfume I have is from Lacoste and this is very simplistic packaging. I believe this is just called Pour L or For She. This one is super beautiful. Again, very simplistic. Lacoste is known for their Lacoste polos with the crocodile logo on them. So you've got the crocodile right here. This one is described as sparkling, elegant, and natural. This one is also pretty bright. Like it's got that citrus note to it. So let's just double check what we've got in our notes here. The notes are citrus oils, pink pepper, mimosa, and vetiver. Vetiver? Vetiver. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Let me know down below. Is that a flower of some kind or a spice? I don't know. But either way, I don't get the spiciness at all to this one. What I do smell is the citrus and the mimosa. So like the citrusy orange with like the hint of some kind of floral undertone. But this one is really nice, super simple, great for every day. This next product is actually kind of fun. I don't know if I would call this like high end and luxury, but this is definitely one that was, I think one of my very first ever perfumes. This is from Victoria's Secret and this is the Bombshell Summer. So. Victoria's Secret has a lot of fragrances. They have the original Bombshell, but the Bombshell Summer is the one that I love. This one has more of that fresh fruity aspect versus the original Bombshell. Yeah, this one's nice. This one's a really easy one to wear as well. Again, not very pricey because it's Victoria's Secret. So it's not like a high-end luxury thing, but it is, you know, cute, bright pink packaging. I love it. I don't know if it's still available now. I do know that around the summertime, they do carry this again and they carry it in a body spray and I think a lotion and stuff. So I'm not sure if this one is still available, but it does come seasonally. This one smells for sure like grapefruit, but let's just double check. We've got grapefruit, black currant, and lily of the valley. This one is super good and I have barely used this you guys because so it's like literally right at the end like it's right at the top because I had I was obsessed with this when I was little that I bought three of the body mist versions of this. So I bought the body mist three times over and then this guy all at one time. So I still have the last bottle of my bombshell summer body mist. <laughs> so I was like I'll just use the perfume last and haven't used it yet, but I'm going to make sure I do, or I'll just gift it to someone if I decide that it's not something I'm using. But I do really, really like this one as well. It's so simple, fruity floral, gotta love it. <laughs> the next perfume that I have is from Estee Lauder. This is the only Estee Lauder perfume that I have, and this is the Bronze Goddess perfume. So this one, again, I've used for a little bit. You can see that it's about a third of the way done. This one smells 
Okay, this one is pretty close to the Tom Ford Soleil Blanc, but this one has more of that coconutty creaminess to it, whereas the Tom Ford Soleil Blanc is slightly fresher. And this one has the notes again of bergamot, mandarin, lemon, and orange. It also has jasmine, magnolia, and orange blossom. This one, I mean, as you guys know, Bronze Goddess really took off for Estee Lauder. They have a whole collection of products from this line. I really love this one. I do think it is reminiscent of, I think the first few years of me getting into the high-end luxury makeup brands, this was one of the first perfumes I picked up because everybody said I needed it. It was like the classic summer perfume and it was the Estee Lauder Bronze Goddess. So this one, again, very memorable time of my life when I'm getting into makeup, really excited about it. Certainly one I've been enjoying for some time and I'm excited to have this one in my collection. Okay, moving right along, the next one we have is also a Sephora brand. This is from Elizabeth and James. So this is the Nirvana White Cologne. And this one I was immediately gravitated towards just because the owners of Elizabeth James are Mary-Kate and Ashley. That's me being totally honest, honestly. I grew up with those girls. Like they were on all of my movies that I watched and all the books that I was reading. So I love that this one actually worked out for me. This one is described as a captivating blend of delicate peony and tender musk for a feminine scent with a dark sophistication. <laughs> When I was smelling this one in store, I definitely smelled this one and then I smelled it against the Nirvana Black as well. That one I think is a little bit more warm and spicy compared to this one and I'm glad that I picked this one up because it is different and as you guys know the general theme of my collection, fresh floral, I do tend to buy stuff that I'm going to wear regularly because that just kind of makes sense. <laughs> but this one is really unique and yet I still wear it. Since then they've come out with so many more of the Nirvana perfumes, I haven't tried any of them like there's rose for sure and I don't know any of the other ones so let me know down below if you have tried anything else but this one has definitely caught my heart I really do enjoy it next I want to talk about Guerlain so I have two from the Guerlain brand I'm so excited the first one is my most recent purchase and this is the Guerlain Aqua Allegoria Passiflora perfume oh yes okay this one smells very citrusy like right off the front you've got your citrusness it's just so potent with this one really enjoying it like a fresh floral but very citrusy this one the notes are passion mandarin juice and liang liang and definitely the mandarin is a huge one <laughs> with this one like it's the first one that you smell this one actually sits in my vanity behind me when i film because i just love how the bottle is so stunning they're very known for like this like beehive kind of honeycomb look to their bottles and yeah, it's elegant. You can definitely get like the high-end luxury kind of feel with Guerlain brand. So pretty. But I did get this one fairly recently within the last year or so, and I've been really enjoying this one. I mean, how pretty is this? <laughs> the next one from the Guerlain brand is the Aqua Allegoria Para Granita, I think it's called. Para Granita. I believe that is the correct pronunciation. You know what this reminds me of? Like celebrating something like sh popping the bottle of champagne, like fizzy, citrusy, elegant. I just love it. So this one is the bigger bottle actually compared to the other one that I just showed. This is the mini and then we've got the bigger one right beside it. So yeah, I really do love the packaging, as I said, about this Guerlain brand, like especially the Aqua Allegoria line is just top notch guys. So good. <laughs> the notes of this one are bergamot, pear, and osmanthus. Osmanthus? Is that how you say it? I think that might be a flower. Don't quote me on that. This is probably like the most like underqualified person to talk about perfume, but... <laughs> This perfume, I want to say I got it with one of my girlfriends while in Vegas and really have been enjoying this fragrance so far. The next perfume I want to talk about is from Marc Jacobs and this is the Daisy Oh So Fresh perfume. This is my second one of this. So this one I have actually gone through a full one completely. I'm obsessed with this scent. And then this is the second bottle that I have. <laughs> This one is a very soft floral. It is not super concentrated or overpowering, but it has that bit of freshness underneath. That's why I think this one is, for my taste, this one is just slightly better.
better than the original Daisy perfume. This one just has that freshness undertone to just give it a little bit more of like what I would really prefer, that floral freshness. This one is described as fruity floral. It says the keynotes are red raspberry, wild rose, and warm plum. I really love this scent as well. And can we talk about this bottle? Like how freaking cute is this? <laughs> The next perfume that I have in my collection is one that I think is so elegant and luxurious. This is from Hermes and this is the Jour de Hermes Gardenia perfume. So this one, again, I've had for some time. It is one that is so incredibly concentrated, very, very strong. You don't need a lot. As you can see, I mean, I've used it on some date nights, but it's like barely touched. Like I have to spritz this ever so lightly on my skin for it to just really develop and like blow up as scents. Like it's just like, whoo, right away. <laughs> this one is also the strongest floral that I have for sure in my collection is much more of a mature fragrance, like a mature floral. It's not so much that bright sparkling kind of floral. The notes of this one, of course, are gardenia. And then we also have jasmine and apricot. It is a floral feminine fragrance. I really respect the brand Hermes. Like I just, you know, the Hermes Birkin and the Kelly bag, it's just an iconic classic brand that I just really wanted a cologne or a perfume from them. And this one so far has really been enjoyable, but again, more on the rare side that I wear this one. <laughs> Next, let's talk about the one perfume brand that I own the most fragrances from in my collection. And if you guys have been around for a while, you probably know that it is from Jo Malone London. I have, wow, let's see. I have six from her, which is crazy. So let's start with the one that I absolutely recommend over and over to you guys. This is the Nectarine Blossom and Honey. This is the second bottle of this in my collection. I almost got the full size of this one, but it's just so pricey that I'm like, ugh, like it wasn't quite there to, you know, invest in the full bottle. I probably should because this is now my second one of the small bottle and I'm going through it pretty fast. But anyways, this one again, fresh floral for sure. Okay, the keynotes in here are surprising. I thought they were gonna be nectarine, but it's peach actually. So it's peach and Cassis or cassis i think that's a flower acacia honey acacia honey so those are the three key notes and i really do enjoy this one whenever i recommend a perfume to someone at all it is the joe malone london one first like this guy if you're into joe malone or you're thinking about purchasing from them for the first time this is a huge bestseller from her and if you're anything like me and you like that fresh floral i would definitely recommend this one Next, I wanna go into the second recommendation that I would give from Jo Malone's line, and this is called Wild Bluebell. This one is definitely more on the fresh side versus the fresh floral balance that is the Nectarine Blossom and Honey. This one is more on the end of if you like fresh fragrances like the Tom Ford Mandarino de Malfi or the fresh like the you know, replica sailing day. This is probably more on your spectrum. Like it's the fresh with the hint of floral, whereas the nectarine is really much more citrusy, fruity. This one is much more fresh. So the notes in this one are bluebell and white musk. Yeah, this is really nice. It's definitely fresh, hint of that floral, beautiful. Really love this one. The next one from Jo Malone London is probably my least favorite out of the six that I own. It's not so bad that I would ever return it. It's just one that I will use up and then kind of leave in that season of life. <laughs> Nothing wrong with it, just not like my absolute favorite. This is the English Pear and Frieza Cologne. This one is definitely a floral of a dominant note for sure. Not fruity, not fresh. Just really floral, really nice and feminine and delicate, but it's definitely got that floralness to it. It is a little bit more of like a floral punch. The notes in this one are King William Pear, Freesia, and Patchouli, and these are definitely, like the pear is really soft and muted. I wouldn't say that the fruitiness at all is really transcribed on, you know, smelling it on my skin it's like the hintest of a fruit, but it's more so the floral. So if you do enjoy those types of florals, you'll probably really enjoy this one. The pear is just soft and has that little bit of a fruity undertone, but to me, it's not fruity enough to repurchase. This one is still really beautiful. 
I've been using it up as well and doing a really good job. It's kind of on, yeah, it's almost on the last third or so. So really happy. This one is really beautiful if you are into really nice florals. The next Jo Malone London fragrance is one that I recently purchased. So it is the newest Jo Malone fragrance to my collection. This is the Mimosa and Cardamom Cologne. And this one I actually purchased while in LA this past March for the Gen Beauty event. So I didn't purchase it at Gen Beauty, but I purchased it at a Sephora in LA. <laughs> Anyways, this one is so lovely. It's got a gorgeous floral, but like fruit undertone to it. So the notes are, well, they say this is a powdery floral actually. So there's the cardamom, mimosa, and tonka bean. This is a super good one. If you love powdery florals, this one is definitely for you. The next one from the Jo Malone line that I own is the blackberry and bay cologne definitely has that spiciness to it. It's kind of like a fruitiness with a spice undertone. This one is, what can I smell in here? Obviously blackberry. It's got to be blackberry. Okay, duh. Okay. The bay leaves in this one though, like the blackberry and bay, the bay leaves are really prominent, but it's done so well. It's like fruity with that hint of bay leaves. And then there's another thing in there. Let's see. The keynotes are blackberry, bay leaves, and cedar wood. It is described as a fresh citrus fruit formula. This one is by far like the prominent spicy kind of feel, but it's not done in like a really warm, spicy, like out of my comfort zone kind of way. It's just done really well with the fruity and the citrus. So definitely one I've been loving. <laughs> The last Jo Malone fragrance that I own is the Red Roses Cologne. This one I actually thought was going to be really like red roses. I mean, per the name, but this one has like a lemonness to it. It's really interesting. So lemon with the rose. I'm trying to pick what else is in here without cheating. <laughs> Let me see. This is described as a classic floral. We have lemon. Ooh, awesome. Lemon, scarlet, velvet, rose, and honeycomb. So those are the notes in this one. This definitely reminds me when you get like a bouquet of flowers, specifically roses, because it's got that rosiness to it and you open it up from the florist or you open it up after you get it just delivered to you. And it's just that special moment. It's really cheesy to say, but that's so true. It just smells like that to me. So it brings me back to that kind of a memory. I love this. Like this is really nice. Surprised me for sure. I kind of went on a whim and was like, I hope this isn't too floral, but it does balance really well. So definitely been enjoying that one as well. So what would a high end and luxury perfume collection be without the presence of Chanel? So of course I have some Chanel in here. So the first one I'm going to talk about is the Chanel Coco Mademoiselle. This one is, okay, a little bit of a story to this one. When I was looking for my next perfume, and you guys, I have a lot, so I'm kind of a collector. <laughs> but anyways, I really wanted to add Chanel to my collection, and I wanted the classic Chanel bottle. So that might be like the most flakiest answer ever, but it is the total honest truth. I wanted this like iconic bottle, and I didn't like any of the fragrances that they had. So all of them to me were just too old lady. They were too mature, too sophisticated. I was just like, they're so strong and like not my taste. Like, dang it, this sucks. Then I came across this one. This one is definitely one of those like sexy date night fragrances, 100%. And this one is, yes, very slightly warm, floral, definitely deeper. And the fancy bottle version of this is the Eau de Parfum, but I also have the lighter version more for the everyday. And this is the Eau de Toilette. So this is the exact same. It's just that you don't get the fancy bottle with the Eau de Toilette. <laughs> and I was like, dang it guys. So a part of me was like, this is such a shallow reason to get both of them but I do really love this. This is a classic fragrance. It is a modern oriental scent that recalls the spirit of a young Coco Chanel. The top notes are Sicilian grapefruit. Then we have the intense freshness of the rose and jasmine petals followed by the lychee note. This one is much easier to wear for me because you can afford to spray it on longer than a few seconds. It's not going to be so concentrated that if you mess up and you spray too much, you know, you can just like 
add a little bit at a time because this one is just lighter. So this one, iconic. So glad I have a Chanel fragrance in my collection. I do love this one and it's just so classic. The next fragrance that I do own also from Chanel is from the Chance line. I believe this is the Chance Au Tendre. I think that's how you pronounce it. And this one is much fresher and fruity floral. The keynotes are Citron. Isn't that lemon? Citron in French. <laughs> Jasmine and teak wood. This one is really, really nice. I would say out of the two, I reach for the Otandra one more than I do Coco Mademoiselle, just because this one is much more of an everyday fragrance and one that's just really fun and easy. Whereas the Coco Mademoiselle is much more classic, special occasion, sexy, seductive, like that whole kind of vibe. So depends on what you're wanting. I want them both, so that's why I have them both. <laughs> This might be the longest video I have ever done. My goodness. Okay, <laughs> let's keep going. I do have three left in my collection. This one is from Cicely Paris. This is the Isia perfume, I believe. This one has a super unique spritzer. It is unlike anything I have tried. It is very fine, very even, and it's almost like air. Like you can't even barely feel the liquid going onto your body. It smells very citrusy, rosy. That's kind of what I'm getting from it. So the notes that it says in here, it says rose, white bergamot, pink pepper, citrus, amber and musk. The bottle is really cool. It's like kind of unique. You can kind of just place your hands ever so slightly right here. <laughs> but I really do think this is really cool. It also reminds me of like a nice summer fragrance as well. So this is a really nice one too. But this spritzer though, like this is definitely one of a kind of a spritzer. I just love how light and airy it is. Super pumped to have this one in my collection as well. The next one is from Coach, and this is just called Coach the Perfume. It is the self-titled debut perfume, I believe, from the line. This one smells really nice as well, and this one has the classic like Coach and Carriage kind of logo, which I love. I don't like the C logo of the Coach line as much as the old school like horse and carriage kind of logo. This one to me is just really nice and special. It's floral with the top notes of raspberry, pink pepper, and pear, and it also has a Turkish rose, suede musk, and sandalwood. So lots with this one for sure. Oh yeah, super, super nice. This one is also definitely sweeter than I would say any of my collection is. It has that sweetness to it, but it's very well balanced with the floral that I think this is something that still is fitting my personality and my style. This one is really good. I think I purchased this one for myself, just like a gift to myself as well. So one of those like, I'm worth it days, let's get something. <laughs> So that one is not like super tied to anything super special, but I really do enjoy it and I'm glad I have it in my collection as well. The last perfume that I'm going to talk about is a classic and I wanted to end with a classic perfume. This is one that has been voted as like the most perfect fragrance for a female ever. Like the prettiest fragrance known to femalehood. <laughs> This is the Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue Perfume. This one is, again, classic. <laughs> but it's just that staple piece that I think is perfect for every perfume lover's collection. I definitely smell the lemon and the citrus right off the hop, and it has that floral undertone. It's like a fresh floral fruity. The three Fs <laughs> that I love. First of all, the notes are Sicilian Citron, Bluebell, Granny Smith Apple, Jasmine, Bamboo, White Rose, and Cedarwood. This one also has a great lasting power as well. And I just love it. Very well balanced, perfect for every day. One of my favorites for sure. Anyways, guys, that is it for my high-end and luxury perfume collection. Let me know down below, what did you think of this style of video? Do you wanna see longer collection videos in the future? What do you think of the perfumes that I have as well? And if you recommend anything that is along the same lines that I may not have that I would like to check out, definitely recommend it to me down below because I will for sure put it on my wish list. If you like this video, don't forget to let me know by giving it a big thumbs up as well as don't forget to subscribe on your way out. I would love to see you guys again. And until my next one, guys, take care. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. 
made us strong You won't believe we've had our grave But sorry, there's a light inside of us It shows the way